you know, the starship singularity. <laughs> um, my friends at Starbridge Venture Capital, I believe, coined the phrase. Uh, there is a belief that if starship works, it's not an incremental change, but something mm -hmm. more, which Brendan mentioned. What do you think? Will Starship be as impactful on the economics as we imagine? Right. I think it's a really important question. The, you know, if you think, again, going back to sort of Econ 101, the first thing you learn is the supply and demand diagram. And the best way to think about a supply curve is as the cost curve. And what Starship has the potential to do is push that supply curve way out <laughs> to the right by pushing costs down dramatically. And whenever that happens, if you remember your supply and demand diagrams, you get to move down that demand curve. And that just means that more and more things that you might want to have done in space suddenly become doable, right? And and so I think that's when people talk about the singularity, they, they think that, you know, SpaceX may not actually face the pricing pressure to bring prices down to how their costs, how low their costs could go, because who's going to push them? But at the same time, we will, I'm sure, see a decline in costs. And, and they do have some people trying to chase them. So to the extent that that does lower the cost of doing all sorts of things, it's actually uh, wonderfully hard to predict the sorts of changes we might see. And I've heard many people in the sector say things like, and all bets are off, everything changes uh, when that comes to fruition. So I don't know, it's of course, by its nature, it's very hard to predict, but uh, the, the, the specific things that, you know, you mentioned and Brendan mentioned for sure, right? The, the difference in how we think about designing satellites or building satellites, I think the differences in how we think about moving resources up into space to sustain people or to do really large scale activities, even space debris. I mean, even ways we think about capturing space debris. There's so many things that might change uh, that I guess I am one of those folks who thinks it may have a really transformational effect on, on what we do. It makes me wonder if it might be like chat GPT because mm -hmm. suddenly, I mean, with chat GPT, all of a sudden there are things you can do with AI that you couldn't do the day before. And, exactly. uh, you know, I just wonder if it will be that dramatic. And I, I'm of the opinion, one thing I like about academics is the wait, wait and see and let's get some data. And, you know, people insisted to me that you could not experience the overview effect on a suborbital hop. Mm. And I said, well, I we don't have a lot of experience with suborbital hops, so let's wait and see. And I've interviewed five or six people who flew on Blue Origin flights, and you can have a really dramatic experience. And yeah. we didn't we didn't think that would happen. It was unlikely. So we'll see. I mean, if Elon Musk makes good, we'll find out because he will yeah. he'll make it work. Um, and I will, I'll also say just Frank one of those things I uh, Brendan had to leave for those of you uh, listening but one thing that Brendan uh, and I don't, we see uh, a lot of things very similarly in the sector but one thing that we have a very happy uh, debate about uh, frequently is the role of humans going forward in space he's more on the automation skeptical of humans in space side and I'm more on the humans have to be in the mix side um, and I think part of the reason I perhaps tend towards that is when I think about the space for space economy, I tend to think that an economy is really just humans trading with each other. And so if you want a big economy in space, you gotta have people in space. Um, and when I think about some of the potential of Starship, it's about making, of course, the automated activities of space cheaper and more possible, but it also opens up whole new possibilities for putting us up there in a sustainable way, which is you know, something that I think people in the sector, many people deep in the sector have a lot of skepticism about. It's probably healthy skepticism. It's a big, hard thing to do to put people up there. Uh, but I retain a little bit of the idealism about that. Yeah, and I, I understand it. I mean, uh, I think it's a difference between a focus on missions and a focus on migration. Mm -hmm. And there is a recent book that came out, you know, it's called something like The End of Astronauts. Yeah. And it's all about we don't really need astronauts anymore mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we can use AI and robots. And that's true if your focus is a mission. Uh, mm -hmm. We can definitely automate more of it. If your focus is on evolution of society and trying out new ways of governing and mm -hmm. new uh, economics, and if you're interested in opening things up a bit, then it is more like a migration. It's more like people getting out there and doing things. So. I guess you have to choose what seems most uh, most important. Mm -hmm.